and welcome to a new video. In this video I will be showcasing all of the drawings that I did for week 2 of Inktober. If you haven't seen the last video, which was the first week of Inktober, I highly suggest you do. A link will be in the description and at the end of this video. So for day 8 of Inktober, I got the order Grey Formies and I chose to do an American Coot for this one. Coots are um, not to be confused with ducks, they're not from the same order. They're slightly different. Um, Groformies is cranes and rails, and coots are rails. They're really interesting birds, and I say that a lot about most birds, but coots have really interesting behavioral aspects, and they typically with their reproduction, so the females have um, different kinds of maternal effects on their young. The females can also uh, be brood parasites with other American coots. They build these really interesting floating rafts for nests. All around pretty cool birds. And um, you will also notice in this video I have changed ink colors. So last week I was doing a copper plated gold and this week I'm doing copper. These are also uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Iridescence inks. Uh, I really enjoyed drawing this particular bird. They have really interesting feet. Nice wide surface area for foraging on mud flats and puddling around. For the next order of birds, I drew up Tinamiformes, and these uh, are Tinamus. They are from South America, and they're most closely related to the uh, ratites. So big ground birds like emus, ostriches, rheas, and other smaller birds like the Tinamu itself. For this one I didn't have any live references so I had to piece together a bunch of references from Google Images to get the final image on this one. I decided to do an undulated Tinamu, which has really interesting barring patterns. And this particular species is a little bit, uh, most Tinamus are pretty shy but this one is one of the more shy kinds of birds. And they're typically found on forest floors searching for food. They're commonly hunted by jaguars. I learned a lot about South American birds over the past couple of days and uh, this the local people have a lot of myths and legends about tinamus. They, one of them says that jaguars can actually mimic the sound of tinamus in order to hunt them. And they also have a lot of myths about why they're so so secluded and, and shy. So the next order is Phaethontiformes. And that is the order that has tropic birds in it. Tropic birds, there's only three species of them, and they typically spend most of their lifetime flying. So I want to get this one in a flying position. And it was very hard to get this bird completely on the page, mostly because of the tail streamers on the back of it. I chose to do a red build uh, tropic bird, mostly because it has really intricate barring patterns on its dorsal surface. There's also a uh, red-tailed tropic bird and a yellow-billed tropic bird. I used to be really fascinated with these birds. I would see them 
uh, in a book about the Galapagos and in bird identification guides. I always thought it would be really cool to see one in real life. And for the back I chose to do a series of triangles. The next order is Coraceiaiformes, and that includes kingfishers, motmots, rollers, uh, kookaburra. Pretty cool. Uh, I chose to do a belted kingfisher for this one, also primarily because of the childhood memories that I had surrounding belted kingfishers. Um, there used to be a pretty large pond at the base of the hill that I lived on as a kid and almost every day you would see a belted kingfisher up on the power line that was hunting for fish. That was pretty cool. I chose to do a female kingfisher for this one and the difference between the males and the females is that the males have a mostly white underside and the females have this red barring, two, two red bars on the underside. So there I am kind of adding, adding that in. And I chose to do an upside down triangle. I thought that it would fit really well with the bird and the shape. The next order I got is Pedicipetiformes, and that order has grebes in it. Grebes are another kind of water bird, but they spend most of their lives on the water, and they're really, really bad at walking on land because, as their name suggests, the order name, their legs are placed way too far back on their bodies to make them really efficient at walking around on land. This picture kind of turned out a little ominous. Um, I really wanted to show it uh, swimming, but I didn't really want to draw the water, and I ended up drawing the feet, so it kind of looks like the bird's like levitating in midair. This particular species is a horned grebe. They also have really interesting feet as well. They work perfectly as paddles for swimming around. And grebes, when they uh, have their young, usually the chicks will hop rides on the backs of the parents when they get too tired from swimming. So I thought it was a little bit creepy just floating there and I thought that the shapes would make it look a little bit better and I think I think the shapes kind of added to that ominous feeling. My partner described this picture as an eldritch abomination surrounded by esoteric glyphs. <laughs> so yeah. I think I think the drawing turned out really well though. The next order was Pteroclitiformes, also known as sand grouse. Um, there are 16 different species of sand grouse, and even though grouse is in the name, they are not actually related to actual grouse. Um, those belong to the order Galliformes, which we did last week. And as the name suggests, sand grouse live in arid areas. And one of the really cool things about them is that they can, their feathers on the breast are kind of like a sponge. So when they're raising their chicks, they will drop off at, uh, you know, small puddles and 
they can soak water into their feathers and then carry that back to their baby chicks. They also have really teeny tiny little feet probably to minimize the heat transfer from the sand to the rest of their body. And for this one I watched a lot of videos of sand grouse just trying to figure out their form and shape. This particular species is a pintailed sand grouse. And they're really fun to watch. If you haven't haven't seen videos of them, you should probably check it out. They're they're pretty cool little birds. The body is kind of a combination of of a grouse or of a galliform, but they also kind of look like pigeons in a way. They're kind of pear-shaped. And for the background, I did a series of rhombuses. And for the last day of this week, day 14, um, I got Phenicopteriformes, which is the order that comprises of flamingos. And this last video is a little bit longer than the other ones because I decided not to do just one flamingo, I decided to do four flamingos. A group of flamingos is actually called a flamboyance if you don't want to use the formal term for a group of bird, a flock. Uh, you could also say it's a stand of flamingos, which is the group term, term that they usually use for storks. I got a lot of photos of flamingos from the Oregon Zoo. These are lesser flamingos. And when I was taking the pictures, a lot of them were asleep, so I had this idea of having a few sleeping flamingos and then having the one flamingo in the middle on watch. They're typically preyed on by a lot of different animals in Africa, so they often will get predated on by eagles and um, hyenas, anything that can pretty much get, get their paws or claws on these things. And these are actually uh, one of the smallest species of flamingo, so they're a lot more easily predated on than some of the other ones. And that's probably why they live on salty mud flats. I had to redo the legs several times on these guys. So you'll see in the early stages I'm gradually thinning the legs down bit by bit to get them as thin as possible. I don't want to make them too thin because if I make them too thin, the ink might cross over onto the other leg and that would look really bad. And for this particular piece, I wanted to make sure that I was getting some of that atmospheric perspective in, so I made sure that the Flamingo in the back was a little bit lighter than the flamingos in the front, just to give an idea of space. I shifted the leg back a little bit farther. And for the shapes, I did a series of squares and triangles. In kind of a wave formation. So there you have it. This is the end of week two of Inktober and here's a overview of all of the drawings that I did this week. So next week will be a different color of metallic ink and another set of birds. 
If you like this video, uh, please give us a like, maybe give us a comment, or even subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.